In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how good enough is good enough. For nearly every single person who has a creative endeavor, there is always and probably always should be self doubt. You work on a project, whatever it is. I'm predominantly talking about, obviously, you know, tabletop miniatures painting and stuff like that here on this channel, but any kind of creative endeavor, writing, music, uh, photography, you know, uh, whatever, the person who makes it does have a tendency to spend time thinking, is this good enough? Am I doing it well enough? Or should I just stop? Now, as you've seen me on the channel here talk about many times, I don't think you should just stop. Uh, here's a spoiler. Everybody at some point thinks that they're not good enough. Everybody thinks, well, I'm just not doing well enough. And there's a lot of reasons for that. People talk about imposter syndrome, things like that. You can look that up on Google. But a big portion of it is just the fact that if you've only been doing it for a short while, and short while means you know, for some people, it means I've only been doing this for five months. And other people, it says I've only been doing this for 10 years. You know, you know, to become a master at something, you have to do it for a really long time. But when you've been doing it for a short while, your output is not going to be great right off the bat for most people. The problem is in this day and age, we have Instagram and we have Facebook and we have just the internet in general with which to compare ourselves and our output to the output of people who've been painting for decades. And that can be problematic. Real talk, if you've been painting for less than a year, if you've been painting for less than five years, you should never, ever compare yourself to pro painters or even semi-pro painters. It's just, honestly, I am a big fan of never comparing yourself to any other painters compare yourself, and I've said this before in other videos, to your previous self. If these models that you painted are better than the last ones, then you're going in the right direction. But a big issue that a lot of creatives have is knowing when to be done with a project, knowing when it's good enough. Now, good enough is obviously a relative term, and it's relative for everybody based off of what they want the final output to be. Is this something that you're trying to win a painting award with? Or is this something you're trying to get done for a game that you're not 100% sure you even necessarily want to start playing this game, but you want to have something painted for the tabletop. And so you got maybe six hours this weekend at which you could get some stuff done. Let's see what happens. Those are kind of the extremes. I am trying to win a claim and potentially money at a big national or international convention versus I don't want to push gray plastic. It's a wide, wide world of different kinds of good enough. And the issue is, is for a lot of folks, especially people when they're first starting out, in their mind, the good enough is what they see on the Games Workshop website. It's what they see on the Crystal Brush website. It's what they see in magazines and on Instagram from people who've been doing it for a long time and they're comparing themselves. So your good enough has to be something that doesn't come from that outside influence. I'm not saying to not look at some of those things and try to sometimes figure out, oh, is that how they did that? That's kind of interesting. I can try to work that into my you know, pieces. But it, good enough for you has to be something you can figure out so that you can actually get things done. If you can never figure out if a piece is good enough, you will spend way, way, way too much time on it. And this is even for people who do want to paint you know, for competition. There are people out there that will spend 150, 200 hours on a piece. I've got friends who've painted stuff for the crystal brush and they only stopped because the crystal brush was like in two days. I have seen people at Adepticon painting still for the stuff that they're going to enter in the crystal brush the next day. So it happens. Everybody does it. But most of us here are probably not display painters. If you've come here looking for a lot of help on display paint. I apologize because I'm not, I'm no display painter. I am generally what I like to think of as a good enough, you know, for tabletop type of painter. And I like to try to teach people how to get there quickly because then they can get back to playing or they can get even more stuff done. If you're painting for kind of a skirmish game where maybe you've got three, four, five, maybe six, seven, eight, nine guys 
uh, models in the in the game. Um, let's say it's something like Kill Team. Let's say it's something like Malifaux. Then you can spend more time, especially if you're like, well, I'm just building this one Kill Team, and these will be my guys. And then if you want to spend a couple of weeks on it and really get in there and do some work, you can do that, absolutely. On the other hand, if you're someone like me, who you're thinking, well, I'm not going to have one Kill Team. I'm going to have more than a dozen eventually, then you have to sort of start to figure out at which point can I call it done? At which level am I going to try to paint at? Am I going to do a third, uh, you know, layer thing, you know, level? No, I'm going to spray paint a bunch of stuff. I'm going to get in there, do some washes, some dry brush highlights and get things done. And I can still get it to look good because I've been doing it for a while. But just because Maybe the project doesn't get exactly what in your mind's eye it should be. That doesn't mean it's not good enough. I could have spent a lot more time on these Death Guard for my kill team, but I wanted them to be pretty good and not too bad, and I wanted them to be tabletop ready. I took a bunch of shortcuts as far as I primed them green and then sprayed them from above with a tan to kind of give them a bit weird, kind of a sickly sort of two-tone. Did a bunch of washes, painted up the detail parts I needed to, and then got them done. And they went pretty quickly. If you've watched the most recent Hobby Progress vlog that I did on this channel, the Monday, every other Monday kind of recorded shows, you'll see these uh, uh, Iron Skulls boys. Iron Skulls boys? Iron Boys Skull? Whatever. Anyway, orcs for uh, Warhammer... Underworld. I'm never going to stop calling it Shadespire. I'm sorry. But uh, these guys I spent five hours on because I wanted to get them done really quickly because I had other stuff to get to. A lot of whether it's good enough for you should really be thinking about how much time you're spending. I see people in the comments all the time. They're like, oh, I've been working on this model for two months. And uh, it's just not quite coming out. Where And, and you, you have to ask, well, are you working on this model for two months because you're going to enter it in an event? Or is it because you're having a hard time figuring out when you're actually done, when it is good enough? Because if you would have figured that out after the second week, you know, and it's, again, this is depending on how much, if you can only paint for one hour a week, well, then it's going to take a long time. But if you're painting at a relatively normal, whatever that means, uh, level of time in any given week, but you spent two months on a single model, it's going to take you forever to get even a, a, a small squad finish, let alone an entire army. Here's the problem. I can't tell you what your good enough is. It is a situation of looking at it with your own lens, looking at it from the idea of what you're trying to accomplish. If you're trying to get into a game like uh, Warhammer Underworlds and you want to build and paint four or five guys that come in one of those boxes and that's the entire army and you want to get it done quickly so you can at least not have whatever color plastic they might be just showing at the shop you want to have something good then understand that from the get-go and say i'm going to only spend six hours on these models or i'm only going to spend maybe you're new and you're slower i'm going to spend 10 hours on these models or i'm going to spend give yourself a deadline say i'm going to paint 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 as much as i can until this date and then they're done the problem is, is that when you sit there and you constantly sort of keep going and keep going and keep going, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that can happen in your paint jobs that no one, including you, will ever notice if you don't do, especially when you're talking about tabletop. So stuff that you're going to be playing with on the table, you definitely want to try to figure out the quickest way to get them done and get them good enough so that you can play. I'm going to be doing more videos this year on... Um, kind of shortcuts, cutting corners, how to get things finished and on the table quicker. Um, and I, I, I want people to understand that there's not a stigma. Uh, when people talk about cutting corners, it's not a situation where that's a bad thing in some situations. If you're cutting corners, again, you're trying to win the crystal brush, there's no corners to be cut in that situation. I get that. If you're trying to win some sort of award for painting, then you need to spend the time and make the work happen and get it done. But when you are just trying to get stuff onto the board, whether it's for a, a single guy that you're going to be playing in your D&D &D game, or maybe it's a you know, some sort of creatures that you're going to be playing in some sort of other type of game or whatever you're going to be running, whatever you're going to be playing, you have to get the work done because not getting it done, because you never know when good enough actually is, will constantly sort of wear on you and can cause you to stop painting. You don't want to stop painting and lose your motivation because you're not getting things done. Try to figure out 
and it's difficult and it's different for everybody, but try to figure out what your level of good enough is. Remember, you're looking at these models frequently on the table from a decent distance away. So if they don't look great here, back them off a little bit and say, well, now how do they look from over here? And if they look good enough, then move on to the next models.